Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for uh, for joining us today. And uh, sorry for the, the slight delay. Uh, we are experiencing some connection issues um, on my side uh, and uh, and not only. Uh, but I think that we it, uh, it is safe to to start uh, start the webinar and uh, then other participants um, can uh, can join in the in the meanwhile. So uh, welcome again uh, to our webinar entitled Social and Emotional Education in the European Union. It is a pleasure to to wake, welcome you all um, on this Friday for this uh, webinar. My name is Cosmi Nada and I am a research fellow at the Center for Research and Intervention in Education at the University of Porto. And I also act as administrative coordinator of the NESET network and as a member of the editorial board of the European Toolkit for Schools. And the webinar that uh, we are holding now is in fact organized by the European Toolkit for Schools. And the European Toolkit for Schools is a platform of relevant resources and promising practices hosted on the European Commission School Education Gateway. The toolkit is available in all EU languages and gathers promising practices from all over Europe on how to tackle early school leaving, promote inclusive education and implement the whole school approach. Today, we are going to discuss social and emotional learning, a topic of particular interest in the context of increased awareness towards the importance of student well-being and the formation of knowledgeable and active citizens through education. A few challenges remain regarding the implementation of social and emotional education in schools, namely in regard to its assessment. We will learn more about this from our first speaker, Carmel Chefai, will present us the results of a report that him and his colleagues produced for the Nested Network. And this report is entitled A Formative Inclusive Whole School Approach to the Assessment of Social and Emotional Education in the EU. In the second part of our webinar, uh, we will get to know some concrete examples of how German schools uh, foster social emotional competencies um, from our speakers, Marianne uh, Schubach and Heike Moyano. Uh, I will proceed with uh, presenting then our first uh, speaker. So Carmel Chefai is the founding director of the Center for Resilience and Social Emotional Health and professor at the Department of Psychology at the University of Malta. He is joint honorary chair of the European Network for Social and Emotional Competence and also joint founding editor of the International Journal of Emotional Education. He is a member of the coordinating team at NESET. His research interests are focused on how to create healthy spaces that, pro that promote resilience, well being, and mental health of children and young people. He has led various national, European, and international research projects in social and emotional education and children's well being and resilience. He has published extensively, including the rest, recent NESET report entitled Strengthening Social and Emotional Education as a Key Curricular Area in the EU from 2018. And again, the report that uh, we are going to, to learn more about today, a formative, inclusive whole school approach to the assessment of social and emotional education in the EU, which is from 2021. Uh, before I give the floor to Carmel, we would like to hear from you, our participants today. And I have the impression, even though I cannot see that information at the moment, I have the impression that we are perhaps over 100 uh, in, this, uh, in this virtual room. So um, it would be interesting to, to hear from you regarding uh, social and emotional education. So I'm going to invite you now to uh, go to menti.com where you can uh, introduce this um, code that you see here on the screen. So it's menti.com uh, and the code is 5052-2945. Um, and we would like to hear from you uh, regarding uh, social and emotional education as an integral part of the curriculum. Um, so the options are, uh, yes, uh, social and emotional education are an integral part, uh, are at the core of our curriculum, to some extent, not at all, or I don't know, of course, in case you, you don't have information on this matter. 
Um, so for the moment, as, um, as you are seeing, we are already receiving uh, answers from uh, our participants and the three answers that we got so far uh, were that social and emotional education are not at all an integral part of, of the curriculum. Now we are getting more answers that uh, to some extent uh, social and emotional education are included in, in the curriculum. So thank you so much for uh, for answering so timely to to this uh, to this consultation. Um, it is great that uh, that we can interact um, uh, a little bit uh, through this uh, this means. Um, so I can say that uh, when we were preparing this webinar, when we were thinking about the expected answers to to this question. Um, and indeed, what you are currently contributing is aligned with uh, with our expectations, uh, knowing this field of social and emotional education. Uh, we know that indeed in some contexts there are no concerns in the curriculum regarding this aspect, and we have at the moment uh, more than 10 answers illustrating this. Um, and uh, in the majority of contexts, there is uh, some concern already regarding this uh, this dimension, this area, uh, but not at the, at the core of of the curriculum. So thank you so much for uh, for your answers. And then I will invite you to a second uh, round uh, of uh, of questions, uh, which is: Are social and emotional education formally assessed in your educational system? And here the answers are a little bit more straightforward: Yes, to some extent; No, or I don't know. Um, and here we can already see this uh, tendency towards no, no, uh, social and emotional education um, are not formally assessed in, in my educational system. And I think this is actually a question that, uh, that Carmel can, can build on and, uh, and start his, his presentation. So Carmel, if you want to comment a little bit uh, on the incoming results and then take the floor, I would appreciate. Um, thank you, Cosman. Um, in fact, as you said, the results are quite expected as predicted that um, in most cases we have 22. Um, social emotional education is not formally assessed and this was also our main finding in the report. Um, it's also interesting though that there are at least nine who there is some sort of um, evaluation, so it would be interesting, and five who, um, who say yes. Um, so I think this is a very good way to start the discussion. Okay, um, let me share. So apologies for this. Let me try again. So let's share. Clicks today is not the best way for technology. Um, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, we can. OK, so thank you very much, Cosmin, for um, inviting me to this webinar and also both to Neset and the School Education Toolkit. Um, in fact, um, I can s s um, start straight away. Um, the, um, this is a little bit a reflection of what we have seen in the Mentometer. Um, a social emotional education is becoming more integrated in the curriculum across member states. Questions are being still raised about its assessment. So this is a relatively new phenomenon, social emotional education, at least as we are structuring it. So we were expecting this sort about issues about assessment. And there is still people who ask, however, can it be assessed, this content area? And then other people say, do we need to assess it? And then there is another question, should it be formally assessed like other content areas of the curriculum? And some others um, say, 
are there any potential risk if we assess social emotional competencies? And these are some of the questions we are try to address in our report. And before I start, I would like also to say that this report, which we produced for NESET last year, um, was co-authored with two colleagues um, who are not present today, um, uh, Professor Paul Downs from Dublin City University and in Ireland, and Dr. Valeria Covioni from the University of Milano Bicocca, Italy. Right, so um, on the basis of um, the review of international literature, and also we looked at um, what EU policies, communications and actions say about um, this area, we developed an assessment framework to guide the assessment of social emotional education in Europe. We took a particular approach, which um, we saw to provide a more formative, collaborative, inclusive, and systemic European identity for social emotional education assessment, in contrast to other individualistic personality and character based modes of assessment, which may be problematic for particular reasons. In this presentation today, we have only 20 minutes, so um, we'll brief discuss briefly this framework and um, share with you some examples of formative assessment tools from our report. Um, if you are interested, um, what I'm going to say is explained in more detail with more examples in the report, which Cosman has um, provided the link to. OK, so let's look a little bit at the framework. We'll go a little bit step by step how we developed this framework on the evidence of the existing literature. OK, and we start from the outside um, circle. We base this framework on nine guiding principles which should inform um, according to our report, the assessment of social emotional education. And we need to start from the very um, first on the um, respecting the rights of the children in assessment. Um, in a way that when we are assessing social emotional education, we do not violate or impinge on the rights of the child. In what way? The right for self-expression. So the child needs to have a voice in the assessment, co-designing and co-assessing the assessment. Also the right for privacy and confidentiality, especially in situations where children and others share information, sensitive information about others, and also the rights to well-being and mental health. So we need to make sure that assessment does not inflict harm through discrimination, labeling, stigmatization, or social exclusion. Um, secondly, the second principle um, in assessing social emotional education is that it needs to be inclusive and equity driven. And here we are um, arguing that the forms and tools of assessment which we use provide an equal opportunity to all learners to demonstrate their learning and progress. Some traditional forms of um, and approaches to assessment, such as those relying heavily on written and verbal tasks, may not be suitable, for example, as you know, um, those who are coming from practice in education for students with specific learning difficulties or communication difficulties. Such students and students, for example, with um, special educational needs and disability would benefit from more flexible and innovative ways in assessment such as, for example, use of technology, what you call technology enhanced assessment, use of puppets, pictures, and so on. Third principle is that at the assessment of a C, uh, C, so when I'm going to so use C for, for brevity, um, is social emotional education, SEE. -E. Okay? It's universal in terms that assessment is for all learners in the classroom. Um, it assesses the learning process of a key competence in the curriculum. Fourthly, it's strengths based. Assessment of C is not about the identification and diagnosis of social emotional difficulties or personality problems or behavior problem, um, difficulties as such, but a formative evaluation of social emotional competence in an educational context by teachers and students. And students' strengths and how such strengths are being developed and may be improved following instruction is at the core of this assessment. And this, uh, we believe this approach is very important, the strength-based approach to avoid labeling students as vulnerable, other, the other, failures, what we call the diminished self. Right, the fourth is that um, 
we believe that assessment should be collaborative with learners and peers, the other students in the classroom, being active agents in the assessment process. This provides students to be actively engaged in the learning process as reflective, collaborative and self-reliant learners, both as individual self-regulated learners and as critical peers. Um, here, one issue which really um, sometimes comes up is since we are arguing very um, strongly on the voice of the children and the learners being involved in their own assessment. Um, there is this um, one of the challenge is the lack of accuracy that learners, um, for example, might overestimate or underestimate their learning and also maybe intentionally inflate their learning due to social desirability. Formative assessment, however, is not a high stake form of assessment where students are compared and ranked or are, are afraid of, of failing, and therefore this helps to reduce this challenge. Also very, very important, students need to be trained by teachers how to assess themselves and give him prompts. We'll, we'll have an example later on. And this will help to reduce inaccuracy. Also, ac ac accurate teacher feedback is very essential to enhance student self-regulation in assessment. Okay. Um, okay, we can go to the next. Um, in our framework, assessment is also um, systemic and ecological. So besides assessing the individual learners, we also um, propose the, the assessment of the classroom and the whole school context. Um, also, these will be assessed formatively okay, in relation to their enhancement of socio-emotional education. The report underlines the social embeddedness of social emotional education with learning more likely to occur um, learning in this respect in context promoting attitudes and practices which resonate with social emotional competencies such as relatedness connectedness collaboration democracy participation safety care and so on we also in the report develop two checklists which um, teachers and educators and school staff can use to evaluate the whole classroom and to evaluate the whole school system. They are available in the report. Um, a very important point is assessment needs to be culturally relevant, taking into consideration and effectively addressing the social and cultural diversity of learners so that all students, irrespective of individual or cultural characteristics, have equal opportunity to demonstrate their learning proficiency. We need to make sure that content is culturally relevant, that assessment reflects cultural variations, and that C is not used to reinforce the individual deficit approach with educators using data, even um, inadvertently, to underline individually based inequalities while disregarding the broader social um, context, which might have contributed or, or to that um, inequality. And one way of preventing that is, um, we, we believe, is to also to assess the context itself, the classroom and whole school climate, and the nature of formative assessment itself, with its focus on personalized and individualized learning and assessment, helps to prevent such an eventuality. Um, assessment of C is, should also be developmentally appropriate um, and it needs to reflect the uh, developmental shifts, changes taking place at different ages from childhood to middle childhood to adolescence. So we cannot have one form of assessment across the board because the assessment has to take into consideration these shifts. Um, for example, if we take an example of social competence, in early childhood, there may be a focus on the social developmental task of positive engagement. In middle adulthood, we might have to focus more on navigating peer inclusion, acceptance and friendship and emotional regulation. In adolescence, there may be a bit more focus on development of intimate relationships, dealing with peer pressure and establishing autonomy in adolescence. And in order to make sure that it is developmentally appropriate, in, in devising the tools for assessment, we need to include both the teachers and the learners themselves. Okay. And finally, 
um, assessment is ipsative. So rather than labeling students as successes or failures by comparing them according to standardized group norms, progress is measured according to the learner's own learning over time. So how much progress one is doing. Okay, and this is more likely to promote students' motivation, engagement, and inclusion. So that's the first part of the framework. Um, now, let's go now to towards the inside to the, the framework itself. And we'll say first what we are going to assess. Um, we are proposing, um, the, we wrote the report just as the LifeComp um, framework by the Joint Research um, um, uh, committee of the um, e European Union developed this framework in 2020 and it's composed of three um, domains, personal, social competences and learning to learn. And we are basing sort of this, this general framework on this life comp uh, framework which has been developed specifically for um, Europe. Um, we will give you the link to this framework later on if you are um, um, towards the end of the presentation. Okay, then the second layer is, is who is going to do the assessment and we start with the learners themselves. So it's very important that um, the students themselves, um, as I said, participate in learning. Then of course there is the teacher but and also the peers. OK, in order to do this, it's very important that the the learners are trained um, adequately to assess themselves and to assess each other. OK, and what is going who and what is going to be assessed? Um, so of course we start with the individual learners, but with, as I said, with the not stops there, there is also the classroom climate and there is also the whole school climate here where we have the whole school community participating in its own self-improvement formative assessment with students, staff, all, all levels of staff and parents participating in this self-assessment um, process. And the final circuit is the enabling factors which will enable um, uh, the formative assessment of C. First, we, we um, underline that assessment needs to be aligned with the curriculum and the key social emotional competences need to be well defined in school curricula with assessment adapted to the key competences. This entails systemic coordination between embedding the specific C competences in the curriculum, development of these competences through instruction, and then the assessment of students' development of the competencies at different ages, and then we do the assessment. In fact, as um, the Mentimeter has shown us, and um, um, Cosmin well said, one of the challenges in the EU is this common framework of assessment um, being aligned with the curriculum. Okay, and one of the challenges in our educational systems is to clearly identify the key competences in sufficient detail so as to be able to plan and assess learning in alignment with the curriculum. And as we said already, the, um, the life comp framework, personal social learning to learn, I think it's a good basis which provides a European wide um, set of competencies which can be adapted then at individual member states according to their own context in collaboration with the children themselves, the learners, the staff, and the parents. Another Carmel, important thing. Carmel, five more minutes. Please. Five more minutes. So I have to really um, hurry up um, because I would like to show you some, some um, examples, tools. So professional learning um, of, of teachers and educators, extremely important part of assessment. That's where we have to start, okay? training teachers in formative assessment and specifically formative assessment or SCL. So mentoring and support in the implementation at both pre-service and in-service. Teachers need adequate training and in developing, adapting and using a range of formative assessment tools, including technology enhanced tools. And of course, to do that, they need support and training at the school in ensuring that tools are developmentally appropriate and culturally responsive and also in guiding 
and supporting students in self and peer assessment. Um, going to her, um, learning communities have been found to be very, very effective um, for teachers to, um, to help them develop this uh, skill. Um, then the for the third enabling factor is the use of multiple sources and various modes of assessment, multi-informant rating systems such as self, peer and teacher reports based on classroom observation and self-reflection. Um, so there is not, as we shall see later on, there is not one tool for, a, but the teachers need to make, educators need to make use of a comprehensive um, toolkit um, as we shall see later on. And finally, assessment needs to be feasible and practical. Um, and this is a very, very important point. If, um, if we want educators and students to um, use formative assessment, um, assessment has to be practical, feasible, user-friendly, meaningful. Um, assessments which are time-consuming, complex, not easy to complete, are unlikely to be used regularly and effectively by students. In order to do this, of course, we need support. Right, um, I'm going in the last few minutes. So that is the framework in general. Um, then from that framework, we also made a number of recommendations in the report. And we also have a, a chapter on examples of assessment tools. Um, so I'm just, just to give you a taste of such tools um, because we have no time for this, but you can have in more detail, these tools are in the report. As, and also the, um, the European toolkit, we are is presently developing um, a, a specific toolkit on well-being, and which includes a number of um, assessment tools also, which may be useful for um, C. So this is an example from an a EU project, ATS 2020. OK, and here is teachers formative assessment scaffolding tool of students um, competences, collaboration and communication. So here the teacher evaluates that competence at three levels of proficiency. The same assessment can, is done then by the students, the learners themselves. Same competence. OK, and as you can see here, the um, Likert scale, it's more um, child friendly and divided into number of steps. OK, this is, a, for example, an example of a checklist for teachers and learners in self-control teacher. The learner set still when was supposed to do, and there are a number of responses. The learner here would say, I can wait in line patiently and then assesses herself himself a number of um, responses. Social competence, the teacher, for example, would say the learner cooperated with peers without prompting. The learners say, I can solve a problem with my peers on my own. This is um, from the Learning to Be project, an EU fund, another EU funded project, a classroom observation tool for teachers. Well, on the, on the column, there will be the students' names. And then on self-awareness, there are two key competences which are evaluated by the teacher. Okay. This is a rubric which teachers can use. It's also in our report to evaluate the, the progress of children systematically, starting from score zero, where even with help, the student has no success at achieving the social emotion skill proficiency. It goes up to level one, two, three, four, where eventually at the very top, the student has mastered um, the, that skill and is able to apply it in different situations. This is a, another tool, um, a questionnaire, which has been developed by another EU project, EAPSCL, um, and it evaluates social competence. So it gives an, a set of scenarios where students are asked about a social situations. For example, here, Matthew has been throwing a rubber at Emma the entire lesson. In the end, Emma gets angry and throws it back. Just then, the teacher comes in and gets mad and Emma saying, what have I said about throwing razors? Stop it immediately. So she got the blame. So here, we, according to um, Emma, um, Emma's social competence level, um, we'll have a number of um, responses which measure her proficiency um, on this competence, okay, and expressing herself. 
for on the left hand column how does she feel so if she scores three that's a lower score if she scores eight it that's a higher level of proficiency and the second the right hand column what does emma do um, this is a self-assessment card for students myself and the others from the learning to be project as i said these tools we are going to make them available on the european toolkit in the coming weeks and um, these are the instructions which are given to the students and um, since i don't have time to explain it but basically on the right hand left hand corner you have the competence for example i understand which feelings help me to learn and which ones distract me from learning then my evaluation how often is this true never sometimes often always middle column okay what if you say that this happens often okay that i have achieved this competence what evidence do you have for that so describe an activity which explained for um, how, whether you have achieved it or not then give this to the teacher where the teacher will give her own comment and also to the peers and there is a variation of this for young children okay so Adler, this is can can you wrap up in wrap one up. minute please yes yes thank you okay um so this is another example to help student self-evaluation from another eu project ats 2020 um for example the reflective sentence starter these are helping students how to engage in self-evaluation for example when reflecting upon her work this, the learner says, this is good work because or the next time I will focus more or I was surprised to learn that or one question I still have is or one area I still need help to improve I need to doing this made me wonder if okay um, this is learning portfolio and all nowadays is becoming more digital e-portfolio is a very very important um, uh, tool um, of for assessment it also lends itself extremely well to um, um, formative assessment we don't have time to do this but this is also from the um, program ATS 2020 um, assessment with young children this is just an example use of puppets where you have Iggy Ziggy um, presenting a situation to a child so Iggy says I have lots of friends Ziggy says I don't have lots of friends and then Iggy asks the child how about you and the child identifies with the puppet who is most like him um, as I said, um, the European Toolkit for Schools will be having a specific section in the coming weeks um, with some of these tools. Um, this is, I conclude with this. Um, this is from the book Alice in Wonderland, as you know. And there is this famous caucus phrase. And in the caucus phrase, you run at your own pace and you will be guaranteed to win a prize. No wonder how fast or how slow you run. And this you can see at the top, there is not one cup, but there is a cup for every runner. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Carmel, for this uh, insightful presentation and for having included uh, concrete examples that uh, unfortunately there is not enough time to, to uh, go through in detail, but uh, as you very well explained, they are going to be available on the European Toolkit for Schools in the upcoming weeks and uh, teachers and other interested uh, participants can, uh, can consult these resources uh, more in depth. Um, now uh, I'm going to, to present um, our uh, uh, second speakers uh, for today who are going to provide you a more concrete example on uh, how uh, social and uh, emotional education can be implemented based on, on the German case. They have conducted uh, research uh, in, uh, in some regions in, in Germany. So I can tell you that um, our next speakers are Marianne Schubach, who is professor um, and chair in primary education at Frey University in Berlin and a researcher who's primarily, uh, who primarily focuses on extended education, all day school, after school uh, and others, predominantly in Switzerland and Germany. 
school career transitions as grade retention, school teaching um, and education. She has carried out different uh, studies funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation and the German Research Foundation and from the professional um, uh, from the Federal Ministry of Education. Um, she also has been an assistant professor of research on teaching and school at the Institute of Educational Sciences, University of Bern, and the chair in primary education at the Institute of Educational Science, University of Bamberg, also in Germany. Um, together with uh, Marianne Heike will, uh, will present uh, for us today. She is a PhD student and works as a research associate uh, in the Frey University at, at the chair of, uh, of Professor Marianne, who I just uh, uh, presented. Her research interests are in the quality and effectiveness of all day schools in Germany. She studied education for her bachelor's and educational sciences uh, for her master's degree at the University of Bamberg uh, as well. Uh, also to mention before I give the floor to, to Marianne and Heike that uh, at the end uh, we will have uh, a dedicated time for, for questions. So the um, questions that uh, you would like to, to pose uh, throughout their presentation uh, or in the at at the very end, you are more than welcome to to write them in the in the chat for us. So uh, please, uh, Marianne. Yes, thank you very much uh, for the invitation, and uh, we we would like to welcome you uh, to our presentation today, entitled "A Strong Journey with the Group: uh, Development of a Program to Foster Social Emotional Competencies." an intervention uh, study. Uh, today, uh, as um, you already heard, uh, Heike Moyano and me, uh, myself, we will present uh, this paper, um, as you can see here. Can you, can you see the full presentation? Yes. Can you go forward to the next yes. slide? Mm -hmm. OK. Here you can see the order of presentation. We will start with the introduction, then we introduce the theoretical framework on social competence. Next, we give a research overview on the impact of all day schools in uh, schools on students' social competencies and prosocial behavior. In the following, we present the research question, methods, and our program fostering social competencies. We will end up with the expected results and an outlook. After 2000, the first PISA study had revealed that students' skills were only average in international comparison in Germany. Additionally, the students' social and cultural background impacted their skills more than in almost any other industrialized country. From 2003 to 2009, the German federal government decided to invest 4 billion euros into the expansion of all-day schools. The expectation was and still is today that all day schools provide an optimal framework for reconciliation between family and work, better education and equal opportunities. Today, about 70% of primary schools in Germany are all day schools and offer extended school days and expanded learning beyond the regular classes. Now, coming to the next point, now the federal government is uh, once again investing a lot of money, specifically three and a half billion euros in the expansion of all day schools in Germany. The reason for the high investment is a law that will guarantee every child of a primary school age place in all day schools from 2026. How can the German all day school be characterized? The German all day school in general comprises compulsory lessons, remedial lessons, 
and offerings in terms of the of the timetable as well as additional extracurricular offerings which are intended to form a pedagogical and structural unity together with the lessons. However, this pedagogical and structural unity can only be found at the few all-day schools in Germany. In addition, all-day schools offer their students a lunch. All elements of the all-day school shown here are under the overall responsibility of the school principals. In the following, the focus is on the extracurricular offerings. All day schools can take different forms with respect to the obligation of students' participation. About 60% of all day uh, primary schools are non mandatory. It is distinguished by the fact that individual students can participate in the extracurricular offerings of their school if they want to. Also, the extent of participation can be freely chosen by the students or their parents. Due to this voluntary nature, participation in the extracurricular offerings of the all-day primary schools varies greatly. Some students leave school after mandatory lessons um, in the morning, while other students stay for lunch but leave afterwards or take part in their school's extracurricular offerings in the afternoon, either some days of the week or every day. Academic and cross-cultural competencies are to be promoted in equal measure in school. Therefore, the acquisition of social competencies is considered an important learning achievement at school. In the school law and curricula of the federal states in Germany, passages on this can be found. All day schools should uh, particularly support social learning across different classes through offers that promote social activities, respectful interaction and social competencies. Especially in all day schools, this should be promoted. High quality after school programs for care and education support children and young people in their social, emotional and physical development. Students can receive individual support beyond the teacher hours. In this way, their motivation and self-esteem can be increased. Both citations are here from the, um, from the Federal Department for Families, Seniors, Women and Youth in Germany. In this presentation, we will focus specifically on the promotion of students' social competencies. Why is it so important to promote primary school age children's social competencies? I give now the floor to my colleague Heike Moyano to explain this. Thank you, Marianne, and good afternoon also from me. I will now continue with the theoretical background of social competences and the importance, especially in the primary school context. First, the promotion of social skills is embodied in school laws and curricula in Germany. We have just heard examples of this from Marianne. Second, the primary school age is an important phase of social development because from preschool age, non-family interactions increase, for example, with peers or with educational staff in kindergarten or school meaning the social environment expands to include non-family socialization systems. Furthermore, the developmental phase of preschool and elementary school age manifests social behaviors and possible also problems 
that can positively or negatively influence the further behavioural development of children. Therefore, promoting and increasing social skills is especially important during this developmental phase. All the findings of research show <clears throat> there is a correlation between social emotional skills, positive social behaviour and school achievement. But what do we mean when we talk about social competence? An universal understanding of the construct of social competence is almost impossible to find in the literature. The term social competence is used in many different ways. Cunning differentiates in his definition between social competence and social competent behavior. By social competence, he means the totality of a person's knowledge, skills and abilities that promote the quality of one's own social behavior in the meaning of socially competent. Whereas social competent behavior means behavior of a person that in a specific situation contributes to the achievement of one's own goals while keeping the behavior socially acceptable. According to this, a person keeps his or her own interests in focus in a social interaction and also takes into account the needs and wishes of his or her other person. Competence is seen here as a potential. There is no guarantee that this will be utilized by a person in any situation. That is, if I have social competence, it does not mean that I always use it in every situation. The social competences, they are important for children, are based on a very heterogeneous field of different abilities. <clears throat> Calderella and Merrell assign social competence to these five basic abilities according to a meta-analysis um, and these are <clears throat> peer relations. What is meaning of these? For example, offers help or assistance to peers when needed, be able to complement others. Self-management, that means in the sense of following rules, controls temper when angry or even regulating personal feelings. Academic competences, for example, a student is able to follow the instructions of teacher or other educational staff. Compliance, that means, for example, a student is able to accepting social rules or sharing. Assertion, such as initiating conversations or activities. We are coming to the research overview. How is the impact of all day schools on students' social competences and pro-social behavior? Studies on promotion of social competences in all day schools in Germany and Switzerland show both positive and unsatisfactory results. Sauerwein et al. assume that it is not the participation in all-day activities that is significant for the improvement of pro-social behavior, but also the quality of the programs. According to Fischer et al., important issues for extracurricular activities are duration, intensity, quality, good student-student and student-staff relationship. Fry et al. find no effect on the development of behavior and increase in interna internalizing behavior when participating in all-day schools extracurricular offerings in Switzerland. <clears throat> A current example of an intervention study carried out in all-day schools is from the nationwide study on the development of all-day schools called STEG and its reading study. This intervention study in all-day schools extracurricular offerings showed an improvement of reading competence of fourth grade students. 
This result let us conclude that similar results can be achieved in other areas of competence, such as social competences in Germany all-day schools. Now we are coming to the research overview of US studies. Participation in after-school programs has a positive effect on social behavior and reduces behavioral problems, especially for students from low-income families and of different ethnic backgrounds. Programs aimed at promoting social skills have a positive impact on students' self-perception, attachment to school, social behavior, school performance, and problem, behave, problem behaviors. <clears throat> Programs that have structured sequence include activities for learning, focus on promoting specific behaviors, and include clear and explicit learning aims are more effective than those that do not take this approach. Dulak et al. described this with the acronym SAFE, sequence, active, focused, and explicit. If social and emotional learning programs integrates all four safe aspects, it is more likely to positively influence, influence participants' social and emotional learning development. In order to better promote students' social competences, in Germany, one opportunity is fostering social competences in a specific program, implemented in all day schools. This can be investigated in an intervention study. For the present research project, we expect <clears throat> that participation in a specific program promote social competences. The following research question will therefore be investigated. What impact does participation in the program A Strong Journey with a Group have on social competences of second to fourth grade primary students in open attendance all day schools compared to students in open attendance all day schools who do not participate in the program. Specifically, is there an increase in pro social behavior, social integration, cooperation, empathy and readiness to help, and reasonable assertiveness? Furthermore, we are interested in how do the pedagogical staff involved in the implementation of the program estimate the implementation of the program a strong journey with the group? And to what extent is the program accepted by the participating students? <clears throat> we come now to the methods. First, the research design. Heike, just to let you know that uh, you have around uh, six minutes left, so perhaps the methods uh, part uh, can be presented uh, a little bit uh, quickly so that we can get also to the expected outcomes. Thank uh -huh. you. Yeah. <clears throat> we conduct an intervention study with primary school students in open all-day schools in extended education, that means in extracurricular offerings. The intervention program is called A Strong Journey with a Group, and the program took place during a period of 10 weeks in school year 2021-2022. <clears throat> this is based on a quasi-experimental design with pre, post and follow-up measurements. In the treatment group are students who participate in extracurricular offerings in general and participate in this specific program intervention. In the control group are students who participate in extracurricular offerings in general and do not participate in this specific program. The sample consists of 160 students from second to fourth grade at 10 primary open attendance all day schools from one school district in the federal state of Bavaria, Germany. One preventive and effective intervention in the field of education is the program a strong journey with a school class from <clears throat> a school class by Machinke and Frank. The program has been originally developed for school classes and teachers, and we adapted the program for our research project 
fostering social competences in primary all day schools. Why did we adapt the program? First, we do not have classes with students of the same grade in the, op in the open all day school, but mixed age groups and mixed grade groups from the primary level of the all day school. And second, in our study, the program isn't implemented and guided by teachers in school classes, but by pedagogical staff during extracurricular offerings in mix mixed age groups. And further, in the original program of Machinke and Frank, one session lasts 90 minutes, and in our setting, this was too long, so we shortened it to 60 minutes. The individual sessions of the program are framed in a story and are easy for the children to understand and follow. In this program, students go on a journey together by train. The plan you see here shows the course of the journey. Over a 10 week period, the train will make 10 stops. At the beginning of the journey, the plan is still empty. You can see that by the white cells. Once a week, when a stop is made, there is a sticker to put on plan. The sticker are always related to the content of the individual session. In order to make the train journey, a song is always sung at the beginning and at the end of the session. In each session, students become active together. They play a game together according to the topic of the session. Also, different exercise papers are filled in and each session is structured in the same way. I will show you this in more detail in a moment. <clears throat> in this picture, I show you the focus of each session that will be driven during 10 weeks. The program addresses different topics and foci in different competences during the journey. Every week, one stop is made for this aim. <clears throat> The beginning is an introduction to the journey. Uh, the second session is aimed at the group feeling. And then the group looks at their own feelings and the feelings of the others. How to manage unpleasant feelings and situations is the topic of the fourth session. In the fifth week, the focus is on strengthening the self-concept and self-esteem. In the Sixth session, the theme is fostering self-efficacy and in the strengthening cohesion and cooperation, then at the seventh stop. At the next stop, we we'll look at solving disputes and conflicts. <clears throat> then follows the topic of finding, giving and accepting help. The last session then concludes the journey with a summary. What about the structure of a session? This table shows us the structure of an individual session. The procedure are opening, introduction of the topic, activity time, reflection and conclusion. And every session has the same structure reflecting the safe aspects indicated by Dulac et al. as already mentioned earlier. These are sequenced, active, focused and explicit. As underlined earlier, if social and emotional learning programs integrates all four safe aspects, according to Dulac and colleagues, it is more likely to foster participants' social and emotional learning. Heike, I'm afraid we will have to wrap up in one minute. If you can please. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, this is our schedule of our investigation. We are just finishing the second measurement point. And what results do we expect? Um, with this intervention study, we are investigating whether participation in a guided universal and uh, Preventive program, a strong journey with the group, promotes the social competences of students attending primary all day schools. And we expect that the treatment group who participates in extracurricular offerings in general and participate in this specific program over 10 weeks will develop their social competences more successfully than the control group who participate in extracurricular offerings but does not participate in this specific program. And what outlook do we have? We have just completed the second measurement point and we are very excited about the first results in winter 2022 and 2023.
Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Heike, and uh, thank you, Marianne, for uh, for this presentation and for sharing with us uh, the the research that you have been conducting uh, uh, in the German context. I think uh, we got to see quite uh, quite a few interesting resources there as well, uh, particularly the um, the train journey. I found uh, found very interesting and also very engaging for for children and and young people. Um, and also with some advantages, I imagine, at the, at the implementation uh, level. Uh, I believe that uh, here on the chat, uh, we did not uh, get um, uh, very, very big questions as to speak, only clarification questions, either if uh, we are going to share the slides um, or um, if um, the webinar is going to be recorded and those are being answered. But yes, all the information, uh, the, the webinar recording and the slides uh, will be available on the webinar page where you found the information on this, uh, this very webinar. But be before we close, uh, I would uh, like perhaps uh, to ask uh, our speakers to, to comment uh, on, on one element because I believe it, uh, it is interesting for, for our participants and uh, Starting from the assumption that uh, quite a few of our participants are teachers uh, regarding uh, social and emotional learning and uh, strengthening social and, uh, and emotional competencies uh, and specifically based on, on Carmel's uh, presentation, we saw that in order to, to implement this, this framework, there is a need for a holistic and systemic uh, action. And uh, quite often, uh, teachers uh, um, share with us uh, their uh, their daily struggles. You know how how busy they are with uh, several aspects of of their work, to, with bureaucratic uh, issues, and uh, a, a diverse array of of responsibilities that um, does not often allow them to um, to focus on on what we uh, often envision as uh, more systemic or more structured uh, approaches. So what would be the recommendations that uh, that you would make uh, to to teachers from all over Europe regarding this? Uh, how can we work with uh, with social and emotional competencies uh, whilst uh, we recognize also that our uh, daily professional lives are not always easy? So if you want to start, Carmel, with uh, with some recommendations, and then we hand uh, to, to Marianne and, and Heike as well. Thank you. OK, thank you, um, Cosman. Um, I think um, various points, but uh, just make a couple of points here. First, I think it's very important for social emotional education to be, um, be put on the front burner, to be recognized as a priority by governments, local authorities and schools. This will help um, teachers and schools to find more time um, on their already crowded curriculum. If, if it is already recognized that this is a very important area of children's development. I think the COVID has helped us in this to put more um, emphasis on education, being more caring and compassionate. What's happening in Europe as well um, with, with the war is also raising the issue of mental health and well-being. Related to this, I think um, teachers may be already doing a lot in um, related to social emotional education, if they even if they don't call it as such. So I think um, we emphasize a lot teachers' own attitudes and behaviors, the way they deal with conflict management in the classroom, the way they build relationships with the students, the way they promote collaboration and openness to diversity in their classroom. So I think these are very, very important skills that teachers could um, role model for their students, even if there is no time where they are doing um, the other um, more important topics of the curriculum. Related to that, I think extremely important that teachers are supported in this venture. Okay, they cannot do it against the grain um, without support or with obstacles on the way. They need to provide it with adequate training. So if it's about assessment, how to um, organize and develop formative assessment tools, how to use technology, which has been found very teacher friendly. It reduces a lot of time 
um, from the teachers um, precious time that they would need. Otherwise, if they have to fill a lot of forms. But in order to do this, they need to be trained, supported, provided by the resources um, by the schools and the local educational authorities. I think that's my message, more or less. Thank you so much, uh, Carmel. Very interesting uh, insights. Uh, Marianne or Heike, would you like to comment uh, on this as well? Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm totally agree with your statement. I think uh, teachers do a lot of of uh, social emotional uh, fostering uh, learning of fostering students, and as we already mentioned, uh, it is an important it, it's also important and written down in the curricula for example in germany i know it from switzerland so it's it's really uh, an important part in uh, in school so um as as you could see in uh, in our presentation there are programs there are special programs to to foster uh uh, students in their social emotional learning and so I think uh, it, it's it's important that teacher knows uh, know about that that can just um, find programs um, special programs as this uh, this journey with a group and they can uh, easily implement it in their daily school. Uh, day and so I think this this is really important to know. It's also important to know there are such uh, programs also for um, for non formal learning. Uh, you know our part uh, in in the extracurricular part. This is the, the non formal part and uh, there are special programs for for this area. So. I think this uh, we should also um, foster um, the future teacher because we are do we are doing uh, um, we are doing uh, tra teachers training at Freie Universität and so this is is really an important part that uh, we do not just focus on academic learning. So it's important to focus also on social emotional learning. Thank you so much, uh, Marianne, for uh, for your comment. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, we can uh, soon close since uh, we we started indeed a little bit later due to some uh, small technical issues. But uh, I think that uh, the participants uh, have for forgiven us and uh, stayed with us for for longer and uh, from what I see in the chat um, the content of of the webinar uh, uh, was useful so we are very happy to to hear that and uh, and to have that feedback um, so um, now I would like to highlight uh, once more that uh, more resources and more uh, uh, structured uh, work uh, is uh, currently being developed and uh, you will have access to, to the results of this work in the upcoming uh, one, two months uh, on the European Toolkit for Schools um, and also to um, keep an eye on, on the European Toolkit for Schools upcoming webinars. We are going to have uh, uh, more webinars uh, in May. Uh, they are not yet announced uh, on the website, but uh, uh, in in a matter of uh, one or two weeks, uh, you will have uh, all the information and the registration uh, link as well. Uh, so thank you all for uh, for joining us uh, on this Friday. Thank you, Carmel, Marianne, and Heike for for your contributions, uh, and I wish you all uh, uh, a great uh, weekend.